Today on Across the Fence, the sugaring season is here, so this afternoon we'll discuss Vermont's most famous crop, and we'll learn about the research being done at the University of Vermont's Proctor Maple Research Center. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in this afternoon for Judy Simpson. It's well known that Vermont is the leading maple pr uh, producer in the country, and we've earned that distinction uh, in part because of our natural resources, the hard work of Vermonters, and the commitment we've made as a state to maple education and research. We're going to begin today by meeting Vermont's new maple extension specialist. His name is Mark Isselhart, and across the fences, Rebecca Gollin recently visited the Proctor Maple Research Center to talk with Mark about all things maple. What's your role as UVM Extension's new maple production educator? Well, largely my role is to work with producers and help them uh, utilize research in, in their operations to increase yields or maintain the health of their trees. We use various things to communicate with producers. Uh, one of the largest formats is the January Maple Schools, which is two one-day sessions where people come and learn basically everything there is to know about sugaring. Um, everything from the tiny backyard operations all the way up to the really large commercial-sized operations. How did your interest in maple come about, and where did you receive your education and training? I grew up in Bennington, Vermont, and uh, although my family doesn't have a history of sugaring, I did have friends who, who made syrup and helped them a little bit. It wasn't until I went to the Governor's Institute of Vermont uh, Natural Resources um, School, it was during a summer program, and I learned about dendrology and you know more natural resources issues. Um, that's really when my interest in forestry and natural resources took off. I went to UVM and got a degree in forestry. And as I was a forestry student, I got a work-study job at the Proctor Center. I was hired by Sumner Williams to be a firewood chopper and uh, any number of things just to help with the, the tubing operation. And that's where I learned about maple research. That was my first experience with maple research. I worked full-time uh, doing maple research for quite a long time, and I also received a master's degree in plant biology, and uh, that was also at UVM. You're based here at the Proctor Maple Research Center in Underhill. What's the role of this center, and why is the work that you do here so important to Vermonters? Yeah, so the Proctor Center is a unique part of the plant biology department, and there has been maple research done on this location since 1946. Uh, UVM did research into maple sugaring well before that, but it became obvious that the university needed a permanent location to be able to do that research. So we have a three-part mission at the Proctor Center. It's research, education, and demonstration. So we'll do focused research experiments and do a particular aspect of maple sugaring, whether it's something to do with tubing or vacuum, or the processing of sap into syrup, or something about tree health. And the third part is demonstration. So we have a commercial sized uh, operation where we tap roughly just under 4,000 trees and we use all the modern technology to produce quality maple syrup. And that gives us a chance to use modern technology and then be a resource for producers who want to come up and see how it's done, what are the best practices in uh, producing syrup. So the maple industry doesn't look the way that it did 50 or 60 or even 20 years ago. There's a lot of new technology. Is that a barrier for people who want to start a new maple business or expand the business that they have? Well, there's no debating that the technology has changed quite a bit. Um, it used to be, depending on how far back you go, it was all buckets and hauling sap from the trees to a collection point. Tubing is definitely the main form of sap collection now and people use vacuum pumps. And although you st certainly can still collect sap with buckets and spouts, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that, it ends up becoming an issue of um, efficiency and yield. You get a higher yield when you have a tubing system than you would with a bucket system. And so even small producers uh, can use, utilize some of this modern technology. 
some of the work that's been done here has actually looked at using tubing of a smaller diameter to boost yields without having to use an expensive vacuum pump. So you could argue that some new technology is actually aiding very small producers who, who want to get into it. What do we know about climate change in the maple industry? So there has definitely been some work looking at impacts of a change in climate on sugaring. The thing about maple sugaring is it's, it's a tremendously dependent on the weather right during that season. So that four to six week season that we typically collect our sap in, if you don't have ideal weather during that period, it can have a dramatic impact on sap collection. So if, for the past two winters, we've had quite cold winters. So there hasn't been a lot of sap collection because it's been too cold. The risk is then it gets too hot too fast and you run out of ideal temperatures before the tree comes out of dormancy. If you look over the long period, relatively long period, maybe the last 50 years or so, we've seen that the season has started earlier than it has historically, and it's ended earlier, and there's been a bit of a contraction, so the, the season itself is a little bit shorter than it once was. It's definitely starting earlier than it was before. Sugar makers have been able to adapt to that in a few different ways, most notably using vacuum and tubing, um, and to be a little less dependent on those ideal temperatures the freezing and thawing temperatures, which really drive sap flow. So um, they, there's an impact there. Going forward, you hear a lot about species migration, like we're gonna have the climate of you know, mid-Atlantic states and maples will you know, somehow migrate north. That may happen over the long term, but the impact for a sugar maker in the short term is gonna be losing those ideal weather days in that really brief period. Um, you know, we say the sugaring season is four to six weeks, but the bulk of production is made on far fewer days, really good high flow days. The rest in between are okay, but not, nothing like a really big high flow day. So looking forward, how will you measure your impact in your new role? Well, I think certainly if producers have questions, you know, that you get an immediate impact there when, when you're able to help someone and, and, and uh, respond to their needs, whether it's a, just a pure tree question or something more complicated, more applied about their tubing operation or their sugaring in general. Um, broadly, we're hoping to focus on issues about syrup quality to make sure that regardless of the size of your operation, that we're all producing high quality syrup. So, you know, to make sure that issues involving filtering or flavor are, are well taken care of and, and, and people are continue to produce high quality syrup. And that can be reflected in any number of ways, but, um, you know, hearing good feedback from producers uh, is certainly a big one. Um, and then on the production side, maintaining high yields. Like I said, you know, if you have to make a wound in the tree every year, you have to drill a hole in the tree every year, getting the most out of that tap hole without impacting the tree's health is going to be an important uh, impact. So there's a lot of work that goes into sugaring and uh, there's, there's, um, there's lots of good techniques and technology available to maximize your production as long as it's not at the expense of, of the trees. And our thanks to Mark for taking the time to visit with us, and we congratulate Mark on his appointment as Extension's new maple specialist. Joining me now in the studio is the director of the Proctor Maple Research Center. I want to welcome Tim Perkins. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. We've taken you away from the sugar bush at the busiest time of year. Uh, give us a sense of what's happening now. Well, we're very busy um, preparing for the season and, and actually in the season now. We've, we've started some production. We're at about 10 to 15 percent of a full crop. Uh, but normally this time of year we would be uh, both preparing for the production by tapping trees and, and making sure the lines are very tight and also setting up all our research projects for the year. Some people might be wondering with the weird winter collectively from November to now, does it make a difference or are those just little blips in the, uh, does it make a difference? Uh, very, very little in terms of the tree. Uh, the, the actual flow we get out of the tree and the amount of sugar we get from it is, is really dictated by the season itself, the, the change in temperature uh, daily from below freezing to above freezing is really what drives both the sap flow and the sugar content. 
but it, it does uh, make it a little more difficult for maple producers in, in terms of choosing when to tap. We had a lot of warm weather early on. They were very concerned uh, about whether or not they should begin tapping. Is there an off season at, at Proctor? Um, there is a, a slower season. We, we do a little less um, field work in the summertime. We're, we're mainly busy analyzing data, writing data, preparing presentations to, uh, to go out and talk with maple producers, but uh, we, we are quite busy year round. Let's talk a little bit about research. It's, it's one of the, the legs of the stool at Proctor. Uh, something fun, something engaging, current uh, research up at Proctor? Um, one of the projects that we've been uh, doing last year and, and repeating again this year is called Tapping Below the Lateral Line. Uh, when you tap a tree, you create a wound, and over a long period of time, if you've tapped that tree for 50, 60 years, you can build up this zone of compartmentalization from all the wounds within the tree. And so it makes it difficult to find good uh, white wood that is conductive to sap. So you, you end up with a lower yield if you tap into those uh, previously damaged areas. So by tapping down lower, below the lateral line, if you're using vacuum, you can actually suck the sap up, upward, which is a very uh, unusual way of doing things. But it turns out that when we tried it last year, it actually worked quite well. Our yields were, were as good as they were if we tapped in the normal position. So just from a, getting a, a visual sense, if I'm in the woods, most tap marks might be belt or chest high. Right. You know, when you talk about this lateral line, then you're talking about going below that? We're talking about going below which it. Which is a waist, place we waist don't high. normally see taps or tubing. Correct. It, we'd be tapping waist high or knee high because that way you would, you would be able to find good solid white wood that is uh, very conductive, has never been tapped into before. So it, uh, the sap will run well from those zones. The problem is that you're pulling it up. So you can do this with vacuum, but you can't do it with uh, tubing on, on gravity. You told me before we got started, I think this was maybe a, a three-year project, and are you, were, you, you have some initial research too early to draw any conclusions, maybe? We've done one year worth of research last year, and um, that, that showed very promising results, but we generally like to repeat studies for at least two years in order to, uh, to see different types of seasons, and, and certainly last year and this year are very, very different types of yeah. seasons. Uh, we have a few minutes left. There was another research project that we touched on. Uh, maybe you can give our viewers some insight too. Right, that is uh, one where we're looking at sanitation aspects of, of tubing and spouts. Um, like all sort of living things, trees don't like to get uh, bacteria or fungi inside their living tissues. So when you tap a tree, you want to make sure you're using as clean a spout as possible. So we've been comparing of uh, different ways to uh, achieve the best sanitation possible, either through cleaning or replacement of spouts. And, and uh, it turns out the, the better a, the job you can do at keeping your tap hole very, very clean, the more sap yield you will get from that tree. We're talking about something that is, it sounds like really a, a pre and post season piece. Uh, or, or is this mid-season as well? There can be. Um, if you're cleaning, it's generally done immediately after the season. If you're replacing spouts, it's usually done immediately before the season. Uh, some combination would encompass both. Tim, just in general, again, a couple of quickies. Ver Vermont sugar maples, we have healthy forests. Things are in good shape or they, not? They do seem to be. Uh, the Vermont Forests and Parks does uh, annual surveys each year where they check on the health of sugar maple trees. It's a project that's been going on for well over 20 years. Yeah. And, and the health of the trees seems to be very, very good. There are always pockets of of uh, forests which aren't doing quite as well for one reason or another, nutrition or drought or other, other things. But uh, in general, the maple tree resource is quite healthy. And tell me about the center as a, an outdoor resource. This is something that's used uh, not only by uh, the professionals and the research you do, but there's student stuff taking place, there's school groups that are coming through. We do, we have, we have students that come up 
from the university primarily, but sometimes from other institutions as well, who uh, look to see what types of things we're doing. We're not trying to show them just how production occurs, but actually how the research occurs is the, our focus when we do have groups. I need to stop us there as we're just about out of time. Thank you very much for coming in. We'll let you get back to the sugar bush. Well, thank you for having me. Before we go, we want to let you know how you can learn more about the Proctor Maple Research Center. The website is there on the screen, and you can check that out, uh, details about the facilities, the people, and the research. And we should note, it's important to note, that the center does welcome visitors, but those visits need to be scheduled outside of spring's busy maple season. That is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.